Hey, what's up, guys? It's Cyclone. How you doing? Hey, I'm back, guys. Just going to do a quick one. I thought this would be fun. Uh, I've never done a wine review for the channel. Um, I'm just going to put this up. Uh, I know I haven't really done content in a while, so I was like, ah, I owe people something. <laughs> and this is a random bottle of rosé, uh, which is, I do enjoy rosé. Uh, this is a rabble. Uh, Rosé. Uh, I picked this up randomly at this like to-go place, and uh, they sometimes have wine bottles just sitting out you can take with you. This is like a $15 bottle, so it's not a world-class wine. I don't have a, any thoughts that it, it's going to be world-class, but you know, $15 is a good value for uh, wine. I think it's a decent price. Um, I would call that table wine, you know, like if this is enjoyable. Uh, you know, this is only a two-year-old in the bottle um, at this point. Um, I frankly am not like a complete expert on uh, wine aging or rosé. I enjoy it. Again, I order it uh, when I go out. Um, I typically like my rosés to have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more sweetness to them instead of tartness. Although I don't, a nice crisp tart rosé is also good. Um for those of you who don't know, rosé is basically red wine without the grape skin. They get rid of the skin, which holds a lot of tannic flavor, and you're left with just the flesh of the grape, which is which is what rosé is. It's like light red wine, if you want to call it that. But uh, I'm a fan of it. Typically, I like it with seafood, and I just thought I would upload a random review for the channel. That's it. <laughs> now, another thing. Uh, Screw top, thank you. I am a big fan of screw top. No cork, no BS. You can reuse it. It's easier to, to restore a corkscrew wine and pour more of it. I'm gonna be frank, it smells kind of typical. It actually smells a little bit more on the white wine side of life. Let's 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 just see what's 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 going on here with this one. Quite pink on the appearance, I will say. Um, oh, figure that. It's a rosé and it's pink. But sometimes rosés that I've had out, uh, this one's fairly light on the on the color. Um, th again, this is uh, this was bottled in California. There it is. Um. I'd say it's right down the center in terms of its appearance. Uh, it is arguably, I'd say it's a little bit on the lighter side of things. I've seen rosé is a little darker than this, um, but that's typical. I mean, a lot of times when you get rid of the skin, you also get rid of some of the color. You're, you're lightening the wine a lot of the time. Um, and then, you know, again, because the tannins are not as prevalent, uh, Rosés typically reflect white wine a little more, a little crisper. They're a little bit more acidic. You get things like strawberry, apple, uh, even pear sometimes. Those sorts of flavors, uh, apricots versus blueberries, cur black currants, uh, you know, blackberries, raspberries, that sort of thing. Uh, tobacco, even in red wine, salt and pepper. Some you get like these spicy notes uh, sometimes in in red wine, licorice, chocolate. But like you're not going to get those flavors. Rosé. It's typically going to just be like your more tart uh, fruit. Uh, so if there's any sweetness in here, I'll be impressed because frankly, I, I find like really like better rosé um, will have more prevalent fruit notes like apple, uh, like really nice fruity characters. Otherwise, if it's just really acidic and tannin, I'll, I'll let you know that too. But here we go, guys. Rosé review. The first time I'm doing a review uh, that's not beer. <laughs> well, I think I've done a couple others that weren't uh, beer as well, or maybe I didn't upload those. I don't remember. Um, eh, I mean – a little bit of oak character. Hmm. 
it's pretty typical, I have to say. Maybe green apple. I get some green apple in here. Maybe very, very tart peach, like skin, like acidic peach. Very, very acidic. Yeah, it's not overly like complicated. Let's take a taste and see what we got here. I have to say it's kind of, uh, I don't want to say uneventful, but I could say uneventful. It's like, it's there. It's rosé. Um, kind of me very mellow. Very mellow. This is like, this is, there's definitely a buttery character to this. I kind of get this like light cranberry tartness in here. Um, it's not that, I guess you could say, aromatic. Um, I would say it's, if you're going from fruity to acidic, I'd say it's like a six towards the acidic side versus a four to the fruity side. It's There's a twang of, of, of sharpness here. Um, again, I, I was jumping a little bit more to like a, a green apple or a peach... Uh, sort of flavor, a very light one at that. It's very light. I almost want to say it's like uneventful. Um, that's exactly, actually, that's exactly what I'm going to say. It's very, it's just there. It's just I don't know how much this actually costs in reality. I mean, the place I got it, it's like a restaurant with a to-go section. They upmark everything. So 15 rounded down. This could be a $9 bottle of rosé, a $10 bottle of rosé, if I had to guess. Um, Paso Robel's. I mean, here's the thing. It's It's young. Rosés, you don't, I mean, I don't recall ever really seeing rosés. Like white wine, it's a couple years old. Like, you know, that's when you serve it. Um, it. Like, there's really not that much information about it uh, anywhere. Uh, fruit harvested from carefully selected vineyards in Paso Robles. Oh, yeah. I bet. Paso, yeah, I bet it's carefully selected. Um, again, this is literally uneventful. I almost want to say bland, but it's not. I've had excellent rosé, like where you're tasting apples and peaches and stuff like that. This is not that. This is very straightforward. I didn't have high expectations. I mean, I will say it's uneventful. It's. It doesn't hurt you at all. Um, it's very light. Actually, slight raspberry twing there a little bit. Very light raspberry. Very light cranberry. Um, a little bit of oak, but even the oak character is not that uh, nuanced. It's it's um, it's there, but it's the the. Uh, the mouthfeel, it's extremely dry. I actually that that's the point. It's very dry. So look, the fact that it's dry is a plus. Like it's not gonna hurt you. It doesn't leave an aftertaste. It's very, very dry. You know, for a I don't want to say it's two buck chuck cheap, but it's cheaper for cheaper wine. There's a little bit of a, a tartness, a little bit of a raspberry sort of thing. That's about like that's that's kind of it. Like I, 
maybe even a little bit of a lime raspberry Ricky, like a little bit of that, like uh, acidity in there. I, uh, that's it. Like Oak and that. And, um, I don't get much more. If you're going to really poke at it, you could say cranberry to a very, very subtle strawberry, like really subtle. Uh, but that's it, man. Uh, I am going to probably give that a seven out of 10. Again, with wine, um, I probably would rate it much more strictly. Like the thing about beer is I have good beer. I get good beer. Good beer is more affordable than good wine. Um, you, Good beer is more accessible. Um, you can find good beer um, for an affordable price. Whereas this bottle here, this is more expensive uh, well, it's actually not true. It's probably actually a little less expensive than a barrel aged beer that it, it, yes, this is cheaper than a barrel aged beer, but it's definitely not, uh, you know, it's, it's cheap stuff. It's not great wine, which can be in the hundreds, even thousands of dollars. That's when they start rating it that high with all the nuance and complexity. So when you get, uh, you know, inexpensive stuff, a passing grade, you know, I'd say a seven and above is, is drinkable, uh, in the wine world, you know, again, uh, I, there's more to, uh, consider with wine flavor, which is why I'm more strict, like an equivalent beer to this would be like a Sam Adams summer. Like I have no problem with a Sam Adams summer. If you gave me one, but I won't go out of my way to, to proclaim it from the high heavens. It's a Sam Summer. It's a slightly summery beer. Like, that's it. It's not special. Uh, this is not special, but it's also not hurting anybody. So, you know, this will let the food that you're having with it do the talking. It's so dry. It's almost, I don't say it's too dry, but it, it is like, there's a lack of stuff. It just kind of disappears on you. It's like a slight raspberry, cranberry acidity, and then it's gone. And then there's nothing. The oak is a slightly buttery oak, but it's it's uh, so dry that it, it vanishes within seconds. It's gone. And then that's it. There's nothing else to follow it. So... Very entry level stuff here. We're not we're not breaking records, but the, the the fact that there's no unpleasant or stinging acidity. Sometimes wines can have this uh, tannic or acidic aftertaste that doesn't quite jive with you, right? I mean, this doesn't have that. It's the totally dry package. So some people love dry wine. They live by it, and they only like dry wine because it it doesn't have as much uh, you know impact and and uh, flavor when you're, when you're finished with it. So there it is. I'm the well, you know, seven, seven for all wine, seven and a half for its price range, maybe even eight for it's because it's cheap shit. This is cheap. This is not, you know, the fact that it's dry and doesn't hurt you in its price bracket, I could give it an eight. Doesn't hurt anybody. It's fine. Definitely. Um, yeah, there's a light cranberry. There is. A little raspberry cranberry thing going on. That's that's about all I'm getting. Um, I've Again, I've had rosé, which has like apple, pear, peach. I've had these flavors show up in rosé. This doesn't have that. This is just a little bit of a raspberry cranberry. Almost like a raspberry cranberry soda. <laughs> like it's very, very light. There you go. Maybe you want to you wanna tell me there's a little lime essence or something in here or something bitter like that. All right, sure. Like, it doesn't make a difference. That's going to be it, guys. Um, notes for the channel going forward. Um, again, um, uh, you know, we're back on the hiatus train, and uh, there hasn't been much that I've wanted to talk about. I mean, I do the Grim Dawn um, videos here and there. I've actually um, – I'm in the crucible as we speak. I actually, 
early this morning, I did a little bit more crucible. I like have my game on pause. Um, and later today I'll, I'll go back to it, but, uh, you know, it's fun. It's like, I'm now, uh, rank 120. I updated my build a little bit. I, I moved some things around and I'm actually using some of the crucible buffs you can uh, put on your character. Like last time I had none of the, um, buffs activated. You can put things on the field that make you stronger. Um, and you can also uh, gain a buff every round. You know, every ten the ten stages, every round, you can give yourself a buff. And I wasn't doing that before, so now I'm doing that. And um, can I make it to 150? It's gonna be. It's gonna be, uh, I think, completely RNG if I get to 150, because. 150 is where builds go to like die. And then like only the absolute best builds go past 150, like into the 170s and 80s. I think, is there an actual cap to Crucible? I, I would have to go research that. Anyway, uh, I've rambled on enough. Again, quick update for the channel. Um, and that'll do it. And have a great day, guys. I'll be around. Probably Grim Dawn here and there. Um, maybe a discussion or a stream here or there. Uh, I felt like doing this. That, that's it. Like, I just, this is on a whim. Like, oh, yeah, let me upload this for fun. Anyway, guys, I will catch you later. Enjoy.